Recently, I was reading through my emails from three years ago, and I read up on something pretty interesting, a gentleman out on the East Coast asking about his parks. More importantly, he was saying that he can't penetrate the earth, and he can't hang anything from trees or tie anything to any kind of natural resources, so he doesn't know how he's supposed to be able to operate HF radio for fun, whatever reason. So then I went to Goodwill, and as I was purchasing every stupid little thing I saw, it was there. And I found what I think is going to be the perfect solution to quickly mount an antenna to something like a picnic bench. Let's show it to you right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Let's go to the bench. This right here is what is known as a super clamp. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a super clamp would be used for, audio and visual professionals use them to clamp onto poles and put their microphones or screw their microphones in, as well as maybe their audio or visual equipment. There might be people at home asking themselves, why would I need this if I'm not on the East Coast and I'm not doing parks on the air on the East Coast? And there could be parks on the West Coast that also have the issue, but I see your point. This is also good for handy hams. Handy capable hams, uh, maybe people in a wheelchair, and maybe they can't put a spike in the ground, so they utilize this on a picnic bench where they want to operate portable. If this gives them a few options, because then they could use a vertical antenna and adjust the antenna, again, not having to attempt to get out of the wheelchair to put a spike in the ground, which could be very inconvenient. And furthermore, in my testing, I realized that this could be good at an HOA, where maybe I put this on my grill or maybe like my back patio table. And even then I found out that if you have the right connectors with a lot of this stuff, you could do things like mount the ICOM IC705 onto here. Is that a very practical application? It could be, maybe you're on a boat and maybe you wanna clamp on to part of the boat so that your ICOM stays a little bit more secure while you're hitting the waves or something. So in my testing, I did find a couple observations. I did activate the park with no issues, but one of the observations I made was there are two threaded studs in here, and I checked for continuity between the two, and there is continuity between the two posts, which lends an idea of using multiple connectors for an antenna, and then again, multiple connectors for your SO239 connector. But a moment ago, I had a photo, and in the photo, I showed this clamp with a piece of Faraday cloth on the bottom, and it said that this setup wouldn't work, and did you know why? But I do want to point out and make it noted that obviously, this is a brick of metal right here where the two posts meet, and therefore if you put a Faraday cloth in here, it may work since this there's no continuity on this black paint, but if any paint is chipped away on the bottom or it hits any of this exposed metal, you're going to complete continuity and then your ground plane will become part of the antenna. And of course, if you're gonna do something like this, maybe you add your little plastic washer right here and the radio goes, well, your radio wires would go here, not touching the center post, and then you would have a plastic washer. And then of course you would have your adapters that connect to the post on the super clamp. Initially, I thought that that was going to be an issue, not being able to have some kind of group of connectors to attach my SL239 and another group of connectors to attach a 10 millimeter antenna. But then I realized by the time I buy all these connectors, which will probably be somewhere around 30 US dollars, I can get this for $37 on LI Express, the JPC Pack 12 base, if you will. And this will do pretty much everything this connectors and whatever other connectors I needed would do. And now all I have to do is screw it on here, or maybe I have to clamp on the side. I could screw it on here as well. Now you're probably asking about radials. The radials can go here and then go out. In my testing, I utilized the Faraday cloth and it did okay. But let's talk about radials on a picnic bench just real quick. Although this is more about a mount, some people might ask about the efficiency of radials when you have a super clamp on a picnic bench, meaning your radials will be elevated or even on a slope. Your installation constraints are one of many constraints within amateur radio. And we try to reduce the amount of constraints or variables that we have, but sometimes it's just not practical. So will sloped radials off of a picnic bench make a huge difference? 
Well, the angle and the arrangement of the radials can influence the radiation pattern of the antenna, but ideally, radials should be evenly spread across, uh, basically as horizontal as possible. And that helps to create a symmetrical radiation pattern. Now, sloped radials can slightly alter the radiation pattern, but usually not to a degree that severely impacts the overall performance of HF. I'd like to share with you a few more ideas that I have for antenna mounting solutions for this. However, before I do that, let's talk about the usefulness of this. Maybe I haven't sold you on this because you're not from the East Coast or... Maybe you're not a handy capable ham, so you don't think this matters, but then all of a sudden you realize you're in Montana and it's 30 below zero for nine months of the year and you can't get that ground spike into the ground. So you just, you know, use this super clamp right here and you activate in less than six minutes. It's great, you know, or maybe you're at Lake Mead, Arizona, and you're not on the boat. You, you got shipwrecked. You're abandoned. <laughs> Somehow you find a picnic bench abandoned shipwrecked in Lake Mead. Lake Mead is a very rocky area. And sometimes it's hard to get that ground spike into the ground. So there's another thought for you is rocky areas and uh, frozen tundras. It's another antenna idea. If you recall, this is the Hamstick Commander base plate. A few years ago, I made a video on the Hamstick Commander. I really enjoy this. And if you think about it, I think I made a 6,000 mile contact with it. It, it works out well for me. Uh, but realistically, look, I could just put this here and get a 10 millimeter bolt, screw it through to the JPC-12. And of course, my radials will go on the bottom of the JPC-12. But then all of a sudden, I have this fancy multi-band vertical antenna base. Perhaps I believe that the best option would most likely be to utilize the Pac-12 with your super clamp. It's maybe not required, but you might see already the obvious reasoning why. And I'd like to just take a moment to explain it in case there's people here who are just learning radio and kind of curious about what's going on here and here. To start off with the Pac-12, when we screw this in to this post that's on the super clamp, that post becomes part of the radio wires. Whereas the antenna is separated here on the super clamp, if we screw in our antenna section to that 10 millimeter threaded stud, our antennas also or rather the super clamp itself becomes part of the antenna system. And of course, then we have an SL239 connector on the side with radials coming off the side. But this block of metal could become part of the antenna system and that could throw some people off. Now I'll link below a bunch of different super clamps that I, I have not tried. And I mentioned that because I can't find this particular one, but if you have found this particular one with the 10 millimeter threads on both sides, please let me know in the comments below. But it will help out a lot of people. And one final idea for antenna mounting solutions. Let me draw this out for you. Let's say you have one of these Carlin outdoor boxes. If you're unaware, you get these at Home Depot. You could put an auto transformer in here in your favorite winding like four to one, nine to one, 49 to one, 64 to one, so forth. But what ends up happening at that point is it's a waterproof case after you put the top on or semi waterproof, of course, right? And that allows you to be able to operate outdoors for a longer amount of time. So maybe you could throw a wire in a tree or maybe somehow you find like a 25 foot telescoping antenna. If you do, let me know. But you have this auto transformer here. And then maybe on the top of the auto transformer, you have uh, either a ring connector that attaches to your wire or you have uh, a coupler that allows you to screw in that magical 25 foot telescoping antenna you may have found again let me know if you did but now all of a sudden you have a portable nine to one here's your counterpoise for example and uh, maybe this is your so239 on the side here and then you guessed it on the bottom all you really need to do is have a bolt that comes out that's 10 millimeters to screw right into that super clamp it, it would probably screw in on the top although it probably could also screw in on the side. So there's a thought there. Not only can you run your nine to one random wire, but maybe you use 24 and a half or 25 feet uh, telescoping antenna if you find it or have a solution to that. My prediction is the super clamp is gonna kick off. There's gonna be a lot of people who start utilizing this because it is so badass. It's basically a Swiss army knife for mounts and clamps. Use it on your radio, use it on whatever antenna you want. Just gotta get a little creative. I don't expect you to find this for $1.49 at your local Goodwill. Again, I will leave a link below with 
similar clamps, if you will. Uh, but if you do happen to find this one in particular, this one in particular with the threads on both sides, please let me know in the comments below. And if you didn't like this video, you get what you pay for. And if you did like this video, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching the channel, everybody. It's Ham Radio Dude 73.